Hi, my name's Kieran Ayland. I work here at the Inquiry Centre and I'm a zoologist with a particular interest in snakes. This is a two-year-old carpet python and as you can see, it's rather spectacularly coloured. Now, believe it or not, that's effective camouflage. This snake lives in the rainforests, or, or normally would live in the rainforests of North Queensland, and you can imagine, coiled up on the forest floor, it provides disruptive camouflage. So this snake, coiled up, is actually very hard to see. Now, you notice it's, it's a little bit cranky. These snakes see the world differently to us. Along its lower and upper lips, it has a series of special pits. Now these pits are lined with very sensitive skin that see infrared light. So these snakes can actually see a part of the spectrum that we can't see. Now I'll just show you something. It's just a cup of hot tea. Watch how the snake tracks it. The, the warmth, the difference in temperature is something that the snake reacts very strongly to. See it following the cup of tea? This adaptation allows this snake in total darkness to catch warm-blooded prey. Right now, move it away from my face, it's looking at me with its eyes, but it's also registering my warm face using those special pits. This small carpet python is actually capable of swallowing something easily the size of a, a medium to large rat. Now it can do that because its jaws are quite different to our jaws. Their two mandibles meet at the front like ours do, but instead of being fused, the join is quite flexible. There's a very, very flexible ligament that holds the two mandibles together. So when the snake feeds, the lower jaws drop and then the mandibles can separate at the front and then the, jo the, the joint here is actually able to allow movement in another plane. So instead of just going like that like we do, they go open, they can spread at the front and then the mandible, that joint there, can go like that. So they're able to stretch their head over a very big food item. Now, when a snake swallows, it actually walks its head over the prey. So the upper jaw has teeth on each side, so those can be moved independently to a certain extent. So the head gets walked over the prey. The recurved teeth hang on and allow the next step to be taken. If you watch this snake, you'll see it flicking its tongue in and out. Its tongue's a very interesting organ. It, the tongue actually doesn't do any tasting or smelling. What the tongue does is it transfers scent particles from the air or from the substrate to an organ on the roof of the snake's mouth called the Jacobson's organ. Now the Jacobson's organ is what does the smelling or tasting. Now the tongue has two tips. When the tongue comes out and picks up scent molecules, if the left hand tip picks up more, the Jacobson's organ knows or tells the brain there's more of whatever that particular scent is towards the left. So the tongue actually provides directional, a directional ability to analyse scent. So a snake like this can follow the trail of, a, of a, um, a rat, for example, by using scent. It also uses scent to find a mate at breeding time. Really cranky, huh? Hey?